What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple just released iOS 14 beta 2 to registered developers today, about two weeks after the release of beta 1. And along with iOS 14, we also got iPadOS 14 beta 2, watchOS 7 beta 2, and macOS 11 Big Sur beta 2. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS. So we're gonna be talking about what's new here in beta 2 in terms of new features and changes. We're gonna see if any of the bugs from beta 1 have been fixed. We're gonna discuss the battery life, the performance, and much, much more. So let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update. So you can see here, it came in at about 831 megabytes on my iPhone 11 Pro, which came from iOS 14 developer beta one. Now, if you were not on developer beta one, the update will be like four gigabytes or something like that, since it has to overwrite the full system. But let's take a look at the build number here for beta two. So if we go into our settings, general about, you can see the build number there is 18A5319I. And we do have an I at the end of the build number there, which does indicate we should be seeing a lot more betas here for iOS 14, of course, as expected. But taking a look down at the modem firmware, we do also get a new modem firmware update for the iPhone 11 series. So it went from 1.50.14 to 1.50.17. So if you were having any type of connectivity issues, those could very well be fixed here in beta two. All right, so now let's talk about what's new here in iOS 14 developer beta two. And the reason I'm staying inside of the about section here is because the first thing I wanna talk about is storage. So I guess a lot of people started calling it storage gate with beta one of iOS 14. So if you guys installed iOS 14 beta one, you probably noticed how your storage just got absolutely eaten up by that update. Your other storage was like completely full if you had like a 16 or 32 gigabyte device. And even me with 64 gigabytes, I noticed, you know, a lot of storage being taken up by this update. Well, I can confirm that it's been fixed mostly in beta two here. So I do have more space now available than I had in beta one. So if we go to my general iPhone storage, you can see there I'm at 50 gigabytes out of 64 and my system and other do not take up as much storage as they did in beta one. And it's the same across the board with all devices, including my 16 gigabyte iPhone 6S, thankfully. And just for comparison, I did take a screenshot before I updated and you can see that this is what it is now, 12.51 and 7.25. But before this update, that was 12.65 and 8.54. So obviously we saved a lot in the other section there going from 8.54 down to 7.26. So you guys can expect to see a reduction in the storage size that this update takes, which is really good news. All right, so now let's talk about some of the actual new features and changes in iOS 14 beta two. And there are quite a few of them, quite a few small ones and also quite a few pretty big ones. So the first one I noticed is the calendar icon has the date now abbreviated. So the day of the week is now abbreviated and bigger than it was in beta one and any previous version of iOS. And just for comparison throughout the video, I will be having iOS 14 beta one on the left, beta two here on the right. So you can see the difference in the icons right there. So over on the left-hand side, we have the full date Tuesday written out. And then over here on the right, we have the day of the week Tuesday, just abbreviated and it's bigger and just easier to read. We also see a slight change to the clock icon. So if you take a look real closely at the clock icon, you will notice that the hands are a little bit bolder, a little bit thicker than they were in beta one. Now we also get a lot of changes to the widgets here in beta two. So first off, if we just go to add a new widget, you'll notice right away that the widgets are a little bit bigger. They appear bigger and everything in this section is just bigger. Even the search up top is a little bit fatter than it was in beta one. The text is also bigger, you know, underneath these, everything is just a little bit bigger here in beta two. And if we scroll down, we actually have some new widgets to add as well. So you can see there, the first one is file. So we now have a files widget that we can add to the home screen. We also have the fitness widget right there. But if we go ahead and add, say the files widget right here, let's just go to, let's say battery on beta one, for example. So in beta two, now we get the dominant color showing on the button right here where it says add widget. Whereas before it just had this, you know, all in one color for every widget. It just stayed that really dull blue color that just said add widget. So if I go to batteries here in beta two, you'll see it turns green. And of course it changes with everything. So fitness, it'll be that bright, like almost neon green color right there. And for notes, you can see it's yellow. So it adapts and changes depending on the dominant color of that application, which is a nice little touch here in beta two. And then also if we go to the photos widget right here, you'll notice that we have a new size. So we now have three sizes of widgets. So we now get this big sized widget here in beta two. So if you wanted to add, you know, for some reason, a big photo widget to your home screen, you could go ahead and do that. It's probably gonna pick the most random ugly selfie of yourself, 
but you can go ahead and do that. And also one of the first things you'll notice here in beta two is that the weather widget has finally been fixed. So you can see here in beta one, it just kept reverting back to Cupertino for some reason. It would never stick with your default location or the location that you have set up in your weather application. And now it's fixed in beta two. So now it stays showing your current location or whatever you have set up in weather. And if we go in here, you can see it's just all over the place. So I had it set to my location and I go back to the home screen and it still shows Cupertino, but that's been fixed here in beta two. And you'll also notice that the little times down at the bottom there when it shows it's raining are a little bit bigger here in beta two. They were a little bit smaller in beta one. It was kind of hard to tell you know, what time the rain was starting or ending. The reminders widget also looks a little bit different here in beta two. So you can see here, the reminders count is on the right hand side and the little list view is up in the top left. You can see it's completely different in beta one. We also have a different color for reminders. It's now blue instead of that orange color. And then the notes widget also shows a little bit more information now when you have it on your home screen. Also, if you swipe over and go to the widget section over here, you will notice that third party widgets now line up better with the new iOS 14 widgets and they don't look completely out of place and completely weird. They look like iOS 13 style before, but now in beta two, those have been updated to reflect the changes to the new widgets. Now also with the Siri suggestions widget, it now shows the notification badges for the notifications inside of that widget. So you can see there, this is the widget right here. It's kind of hard to tell because it really doesn't have a border, which is really weird because when you go to edit, you can see the border right there. So I believe this is a bug. It's definitely a bug here in iOS 14 beta two. I believe it was the same in beta one. So they've still not fixed the Siri suggestions bug right here where it kind of just blends in with your home screen and you can't even tell that it's a widget. But anyways, you can now see the notification badges for applications within that widget. Now, if we go over to the app library, there are a couple of changes here as well. And the first one is going to be removing an application that's now called deleting an application. So if you go ahead and go onto something like Twitter right here, it'll now say delete app as opposed to remove app. So you can see here when I do it on beta one, you can see it says remove app, just like it does on the home screen. But now in iOS 14 beta two, it now shows delete app instead. And also in the app library, when you go to the list view right here, you can now 3D touch on the icons. Whereas in beta one, you can see when I let go, no matter what I do, it's gonna open up the application. Whereas in beta two, it does not do so. You can see right there, which is pretty nice. And then you can just go back and press cancel and you'll be in wiggle mode. Whereas you couldn't do that in beta one for some reason. Now, another change to the home screen, if we go ahead and haptic press on an application and go to remove app, you'll notice that we have some new verbiage here now. So instead of add to library, it's now remove from home screen. And I think that makes a lot more sense because in beta one, it makes it seem like you're not really deleting it. You're just adding it to the library. But now in beta two, it, the verbiage just makes more sense. It says remove from home screen, which is like more of what you're actually doing. So. Nice little change there in verbiage. Now, if we go into our settings and go to accessibility, voiceover, let's go to speech, let's go to pronunciations. I'm just trying to get deep into the menus here. So in beta one of iOS 14, if you went ahead and haptic pressed on the menu item up in the top left, you would get a menu like this and you would be able to go ahead and select wherever you wanted to go back to in the settings, which would help if you were like deep within settings and you wanted to get back to the main page without, you know, pressing the buttons, you know, multiple times to get back there. So it was pretty nice, but that has changed a little bit here in beta two. So now if you have to press on that menu item and you let go, you can see there, it does not pull up the menu. It just goes back. So that means that you have to select where you want to go with your finger still on the screen, which I think is better. And it saves you from having to press twice on the screen. And you can see, we can go all the way back to settings just like that with one tap and keeping our finger on the screen. So I like that little adjustment here in beta two. Now, speaking of settings, we also have a new option for music. So if we go into our music, you'll see we have a new menu item there called motion. And you can see it says animated cover art won't be displayed. So you can either turn motion on or off and it says motion will not play if your device has low battery or poor network connection. So that of course is referencing the background image where, you know, this one is all black right now, but it will adapt to the dynamic colors of the album art. So if I go ahead and play this song right here, you can see it does move a little bit in the background, those colors, it's like a big bubble of the dynamic colors, the dominant colors of the album artwork, which is pretty cool. And I think that everybody should probably have motion on just because of how cool it looks. But of course, if you don't like that, you now have the option to turn it off. Now, also inside of the music application, we get some nice little changes here as well. So let me just pull up beta one here. So you'll notice a couple changes right away. So first off, you can see that R&B soul in 2020. So the genre and the year is a little bit bigger and bolder here in beta two. Also right down here where it shows the description, it's now a lot better looking than beta one. It was very tight in there and there's like no padding between the description and like the play button. But now there's some 
some padding put in there. And you can see also the more button is now black as opposed to red. And then my favorite new feature in beta two in the music application is that we now get haptic feedback anytime you press on a music control. So if you press back, play pause or next, you get haptic feedback when you press on those, which feels really good on the back of your hand when you're holding the phone. And I think it just adds to the whole iOS experience. I really like that. Now we also get some changes inside of Safari. So first thing you'll see that when we press on those two A's in the address bar, we now have privacy report instead of tracking report like it was in beta one. And if we go ahead and tap on that, you'll see that the change and name also reflects in the very top up there. It says privacy report instead of tracking report. And then we can also now click on the tracker section, whereas we could not in beta one. So you can see here I can click on trackers very easily and it shows all the trackers for that website. Also inside of the app library, I forgot to mention this one earlier, we can now no longer remove applications like health. So if we go ahead and 3D press on health right here, you can see in beta two, there's no option to delete. Whereas in beta one, if I have to press on health right here, you can see we get the option to remove. And it seems like it's only for select applications. And if we go to our settings right here, you can see we can't do it for settings. So it may just be all the default applications. I just noticed there is a little bit of a difference here in what you can and cannot delete from the app library section. So now in beta two, the wallpaper preview section now shows the widgets as expected and not this huge blown up icon of whatever widget was right there, which is one of the funniest bugs in beta one. You can see now in beta two that has been fixed to reflect accurately what's actually on your home screen in terms of the widgets. Also in the health application, if we go to other data right here, you'll notice that we do have hand washing and we have a new little screen here that shows get more from health hand washing can protect your health and it kind of gives you a guide on how the feature works and why it's useful and then if we go to the hand washing section you can see that that little article is right there as well whereas it didn't populate in beta one also in the fitness application you can see there's a slight change to the awards and the workouts section right here also new here in beta two picture in picture video now has three different sizes as opposed to just two so if we go ahead and double tap right here you'll notice that we have a medium size now instead of taking up the full screen like it did in beta one so we just had two different size options now in beta two we have three different size options so you can see we have a small kind of a medium and then a full screen right there, which is pretty nice. There's also a new feature in iPadOS 14 beta two. You can see here in the photos application, we have a new section called utilities, which shows our imports hidden and recently deleted instead of just being up there batched together with everything else in photos. So those are all the new features and changes that I found so far after playing with the software for about an hour. I'm sure I will find more features and changes here in iOS 14 beta two. And if you wanna see those, make sure you guys are subscribed. I will be making a new video showing more new features and changes here in beta 2. So now let's talk about the bugs, the performance, the battery life, and if you should update or wait for the public beta. Now, as far as bugs go, I don't really have a ton of things to complain about. I mean, I've only been using it for about an hour, an hour and a half, so I don't really have too much yet. But the things I will point out are, of course, the series suggestions widget. I do think there should be a border around there to show us that that's actually a widget. Also, there are gonna be some issues with widgets overall here in beta two. I mean, this is only beta two of a brand new feature that's never been in iOS before. So still continue to expect issues with widgets, although the weather widget should be a lot better here now in beta two and it should not show Cupertino every time, which got really annoying. So yeah, not a lot to complain about yet, but I will have a follow-up video coming on Saturday and I will let you guys know if there are any new bugs that I experienced after using the software throughout the rest of this week. Now, as far as performance goes, performance has been pretty excellent so far on beta two. I've really not had any issues, no random resprings or anything like that. I did also run a Geekbench test and take a look up there. So up top is going to be beta two, right below that is going to be beta one. Take a look at that. So we do have quite a nice improvement in both single core and multi-core. So we went from a 1308 single core to a 1315 and from a 3191 multi-core to a 34 61 multi-core. So a nice jump there in the benchmarks. Now, of course, those don't always tell the whole story, but it does you know, indicate that there is some type of improvement here in beta two. So you can expect beta two to be more stable and perform a little bit better than beta one. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life on beta one for me was pretty good on my 11 Pro. Of course, I can't tell you how it's been so far on beta two since I've just started using it, but I will follow up with you guys on Saturday and let you guys know if the battery life has improved throughout the week. I'm really hoping it's improved on my iPhone 6S up here. And I will also be reporting on that because that had terrible battery life in beta one. And as far as connectivity goes, connectivity has also been pretty good here in beta two. So I did not have 
any kind of issues with airdrop. So for some reason in beta one, airdrop would just fail like pretty frequently. Anytime I would send something between my Mac or another iPhone to this iPhone on iOS 14, it would fail sometimes and it would just say failed or it would just say sending forever and never send. But now in beta two, I tested it with multiple files and I've not had any issues. So it seems that airdrop has been fixed. If you were having any bugs with that, that should be fixed in beta two. Same with Wi-Fi. I didn't have an issue with Wi-Fi, but some people reported that their Wi-Fi would drop randomly and their cell connectivity would just randomly drop. That seems to be fixed here in beta two. Some people have reported on that, but again, it's just recently been released. So take that with a grain of salt. You guys need to install it and let me know if it's fixed the connectivity issues, the Wi-Fi issues for you. So now let's answer a question that a lot of you guys have been asking me nonstop. When can we expect the public beta of iOS 14? When can we expect iOS 14 public beta one? And I would expect that to be released on July 13th or July 14th. So if you are a public beta tester, you can probably expect to see the first beta next week. And that of course should be the exact same build as a developer beta two. And if you guys don't know how to install the iOS 14 beta, I will have a tutorial when the public beta does get released. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, that's pretty much it for iOS 14 and developer beta two. Let me know what you guys think. Have you found any other new features and changes that I didn't mention in this video? Again, I will be reporting on multiple new features and changes because I'm sure there are a lot of them come Saturday in my follow-up video for beta two. But let me know down in a comment if you guys found anything new. And shout out to everybody in the Discord server for helping me out with finding some of these new features and changes. I really appreciate you guys there. If you have not joined the Discord server yet, I will have that linked down in the description below. It's always a super fun time and I'm pretty active over there as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe if you have not done so already. I will be covering iOS 14 more in depth than anybody on YouTube. I almost guarantee it. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you can see all the iOS 14 content. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.